Hello YouTube, it's William. Uh, out here, wheeling on the stick and uh, actually heating up the kiln so I can do some normalization on some some blades before I heat treat. Um, you gotta, there's a process that you have to go through. But uh, anyway, it's very detailed, if you will. Um, but if you have a kiln and, and you want to know my process, then just send me a PM. I, it's not a secret. Uh, I'll let you know what to do. But anyway, <clears throat> welcome to another Whittle Talk. Um, I haven't done a Whittle Talk in a while, so maybe I would do one. Let's talk about um, blade shapes and their benefits. Um, now, everyone's familiar with butcher style knives and fillet knives and, and um, bushcraft knives and, and what is typically considered, and I say typically because I hate putting labels on knives because a knife is a knife. Um, it depends on your skill level how well you can use that knife. Now, different blade shapes lend themselves to different uh, tasks more easily. I mean, that's a given. Uh, for instance, um, a what is considered a bushcraft knife is typically shaped similar to this, where it has a long sweeping point. Mine has a little bit more belly than most. Most of them come straight, but it's more of a straight than, than having a, a belly on them. And that's so that you have a very fine tip to get in there and, and carve into wood and get into those little little tight places like in the recesses so you have a point to get in there and and just for wood carving okay that's that's typically what what you would see in in the wood lore style knives and the clones um, they they don't have much of a belly they're not for processing meat they can but they're, they're, they're not designed for that. Now just because a knife is not designed for that doesn't mean it can't do that. Okay, let's we'll get that out there first. Now, when you talk about butcher style knives, which uh, the old standard, I mean everybody has seen them, the, the, the typical drop point uh, knife or blade where you have a, a, an upswept portion or a belly of the knife so that you have something to, to skin with. I mean, you, you want that, that portion there. It's, it's for getting in there and, and running underneath the, the, between the skin and the, and the hide and ripping that, that, uh, that animal open. That's typically for butchering. And you also want a curved surface separating the hide from the from the carcass because you don't want to puncture the hide because in most places or in most situations you want to save the hide either caping or, or for a mount or you want to use it for leather raw hide or whatever but uh, so that's that's a typical drop point now on this is the butch my butch design you see it has a very sweeping belly has a lot of belly not much of a point okay and that is, that is because the points, you want just enough point to get in there and do those, those separate the hide from the, from, the, from the carcass, but you want more of a belly to do those sweeping cuts, separating meat from bone, um, uh, hide from, from meat. I mean, you're, you're separating, you want a, also a wide blade so it, it doesn't, you doesn't, you're not doing curving cuts. Whereas with uh, a bushcraft knife, you want a, a thin point, remember, because you get it in their wood and, and in their in tight areas and, and carving out, out material. Whereas a butcher knife, you're not doing that. You're doing long, sweeping, straight cuts. Okay? So, the other end of the spectrum on skinning blades is thin points, like on the rat, my rat tail skinner. And that is, that is typically for separating meat from bone 
we can get in tight places and work the blade around those bones and um, and s separate the meat from the bone. In other words, in other words it's, a, it's more of a boning knife and the blade length varies. But you have a sweeping blade with a fine point that typically a very thin blade to get in there and, and separate uh, cartilage from bone, muscle from bone, sinew from bone, and that type of thing. Okay, now, <clears throat> there are hybrids that um, lend themselves to, to different situations, and uh, those hybrids are good at doing multiple tasks, but they're not perfect in one area. So, in other words, like my, my bush or my forest fatty here. Uh, it has a long sweeping point, but it also has a belly for separating skin from, from, from flesh. And also for those long straight cuts, you have a width of a blade to help guide you in those strong, those, but you also have a narrow point to where you can get in there and, and carve out material on a thick, where you can make those, those curved cuts, okay? So, in other words, you can you can get in there and, and you can, whereas if you use the wide part, it, it doesn't get in there as easily, okay? But if you have a narrow blade like this, then it can get in there and you can turn the blade and, and do those, those tight area cuts. Hope all this is making sense. So, the, uh, the other part that you need to, to understand on, on blade points is a spear point is is stronger in most cases than say a thin point of course I mean you can just look at this and common sense will tell you that this point is not as strong as this point okay also the width of a blade plays into that as well but just in general purposes, we're talking geometry of, of a blade, uh, or shape of a blade. And a spear point like this is stronger than a spear point like this. Okay? And that's just because it has more metal here than up here. It's less of a distance. Okay? In the same, same area, let's see if I can hold these side by side. From here to here is more metal than here to here. Okay? Does that make sense? So if you put this blade in a bind, it's more likely to break than this blade. So if you want a blade that, that's stronger in, in twisting cuts, and you want more of a spear point. But if you want something that, that can get in those tight places and do sweeping cuts without putting too much side pressure on it, then this is your better blade. Okay? Yeah, about another 100 degrees and we'll be good. So I just wanted to talk briefly about blade shapes. I've, I've talked about just about everything but blade shapes. And uh, I wanted to give you uh, what little I know about them and uh, explain the differences because somebody, uh, maybe you was wondering and I don't know of anybody who's, who's really talked about it much, but it all boils down to skill level, knowing your knife, knowing your area, what you need in a knife, and choosing the knife from that point. Um, now, if you if you want to use a knife primarily for woodcraft, uh, uh, carving out of wood and things like that, then that's a certain knife. But if you want a, a multi-purpose knife to where you're going to be skinning game, uh, processing meat, um, butchering animals, and wood carving and so on, do you want something in between? So, it all depends on how you plan on using your knife. So, once you figure that out, then you can start shopping around for a blade shape. And, um, hope you choose the right one. Most of us, we're still searching for the perfect knife. Maybe it's out there somewhere. We just hadn't found it yet. <laughs> but it's fun searching. So, we're going to continue the search. So anyway, until the next one. Oh, and uh, one thing I wanted to, to talk about. 
is um, these uh, these deep belly knives like the spear point or not spear point but drop point or modified drop point um, you can actually do bowls and all kinds of things with these knives and one one day when I'm on camp not doing anything else I will I will show you and, and basically what you're doing is you're just you're using the belly to scoop out material you say, oh my god he's gonna cut his hand <laughs> no <laughs> cut my hand because I, I'm, I'm not I'm not using a slicing motion with the blade because the hand is just holding the blade and it all depends on your skill level and you got to use a knife folks you have got to get out and use a knife to learn all of these techniques and, and to do this without cutting yourself do I still cut myself sure anytime you mess with edge weapons or edge blades you're going to cut yourself eventually, but as you use them and get more in, in, in tune with your knife and how to use that knife, the less you're going to cut yourself, okay? But anyway, so you can you can take this, and this is uh, uh, pin oak, I believe, and you can use that curved blade and just scoop out and get you a very quick uh, camp spoon uh, in case you lose your lose your spoon or break your spoon on, on camp or forget it at the house and you need to eat that that can of beans then if you have something with a belly on it it is more easily able to excuse me to scoop out that material and get you a a uh, spoon bowl okay so a little little tip there so until the next one you guys uh, be safe Get out in the woods, out in the great outdoors, or even if it's in the backyard. Um, build a fire, roast a weenie with a child. Um, pass on some of this knowledge to, to those that's coming after us. And that's what this is all about, is uh, me passing on what little I know to everybody else that, that wants to hear. So, uh, until next time, you guys be safe, take plenty of band-aids and lots of knives. We'll catch you again soon.